Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Today we're talking about another incredible update to Blockade Labs Skybox AI, or what they call Sketch to Skybox. We've covered a lot of Scotty Fox's work prior and I'll link to the video above. Scotty, for those of you who don't know, has worked on a lot of VR um, stable diffusion concepts. I think some of his initial work is actually still kind of more interesting than this, but this tool has gotten so much better and is actually being used by game devs in so many different new demos and experiments that I had to make a video of this once it was officially out. Now, it's important to note that we've also showcased some workflows on this channel that let you do this with a local install of Stable Diffusion. It takes, you know, like five or six different plugins and the sketching attribute of this isn't there, but it is important to note that it is possible to do this locally with Stable Diffusion and the right plugins with Automatic 11.11. However, um, again, you don't get the sketch features. It takes way longer. I mean, like using this tool, it takes maybe one to two minutes at most. Doing this locally would take at least an hour. In most cases with the resolution you can achieve with Skybox AI, it would be three hours doing it locally. I love this tool because they fix a lot of problems I've seen in 3D software. And above all, it's really cool to see this tool evolve as quickly as it has. So let's jump into it. What I think is cool about Blockade Labs is they're very developer centric. So what's funny is seeing this, this is you know basically all of their release notes that I would expect to see in like a GitHub repo. So they tell you exactly what they've changed and they have kind of a tutorial to show you how to use it. But uh, that's what you're watching today. And uh, what's cool is we know now that what they're using to do this is actually just a tweaked version of Stable Diffusion 1.4. So this is what you can achieve now with the tool, which is still like pretty impressive to think that this is all AI generated and not necessarily procedural. My biggest thing with Skybox AI is you can get results that are way better than existing tools like in Cinema 4D or Blender or Unreal Engine uh, that try to make Procedural environments, think about the same algorithm that's used in Minecraft to generate infinite terrain. What I really love about this is it's truly dynamic and it's not necessarily procedural in that you don't get these repeating structures and landforms all the time, which is actually pretty hard to tweak to make look natural with some of the existing tools that aren't AI based. So we're gonna do something, okay, we'll say sci-fi. I'm gonna create a new one. And uh, so this is new. So now you have the toolbar and you have the prompt bar. So the prompt bar, obviously you put in words you want to show up. And with the brush, you can now paint in this three-dimensional canvas and roughly draw the outlines of what you want. And then the AI will figure out what it thought you meant based on your prompt. This is incredibly cool. What I love about this is for those of you who have used 3D software, maybe some of you haven't, one of the big challenges in drawing freeform is usually when you do that, it's hard for the software to understand which plane you want to be drawing on. So unless you're drawing on the x-axis or the y-axis or the z-axis, it's hard to do freehand drawing like they have basically perfected here. There are a few different ways you can start out. So you can start with this sort of cylindrical POV setup, which is the best because you know a lot of how the mapping works behind the scenes is roughly based on a POV similar to what humans see. However, uh, if you want to be more conventional, there's the cubic grid. So this gives you, uh, like I said, kind of a, a, a distinct XYZ axis. What's nice here is whenever you draw, it's drawing against this. So that's what you're kind of seeing here. Obviously there's no skybox generated yet. And the plane grid shows you what you're standing on. We're not gonna worry about that because it makes it to see. So I'm going to roughly draw uh, what I think a futuristic Mars base would look like. I have a ladder here and a porthole okay and then we'll pan over here and i'm going to try to draw sort of some 3d printed habitats and what's interesting is i when i've been playing around with this sometimes it understands 3d stuff and other times it really doesn't but we are going to see what we can get here all right and then here this will be the rocket so this is what the uh, astronauts came here on and we're gonna have to pan up a little bit one thing that would be nice is if they had some way and, and obviously this is a big ask but if they had some way to draw or to have it pan dynamically so you would so you didn't have to switch tools however i think it's fine so let me draw some Maybe some kind of uh, landforms here. Human settlement. 
on Mars with a cab module rocket and Martian mountains in the distance. Right, now this might take a little while because they said there are a lot of people using it. Oh, actually, you know, I think they speed up the first one you have because I've done this a number of times and it usually freaks out. They might be doing a thing that Apple does where they fake the loading bar. Um, for those of you who don't know, Apple does fake loading bars even when your service is bad. Uh, but this will be interesting. I've done a lot of sort of, you know, everyone's done castles. Everyone's done things like, um, for, whatever, for whatever reason, this tool is actually really good at making hallways and corridors okay interesting interesting all right so this is a more abstract generation that i've seen but this is still good so we have you know the hab module here i guess we'll call that we have some paths and we have what is a martian landscape and i like what it did with the rocket i like that we have sort of this blue I like that. I like the blue flames or the blue energy coming out of the bottom. Okay. Okay. Now, what's interesting is this model kind of, it makes skyboxes that are in, intended to be interacted with. So that's why you see these paths here that I think are actually kind of interesting. And, uh, oh, cool. It got the mountains and the regoliths too. That is very cool. So, yeah, this is what we get with the latest version of Sketch to Skybox with Blockade Labs. It used to be just Skybox AI. Now they're calling this Sketch to Skybox since we sketched and now we have Skybox. So as cool as this is, I'm going to cut to another video I did with a more conventional generation, which was just drawing a castle and then I drew sort of a defensive castle right in front of it and what you'll see is that in this generation it actually was right around a bunch of walking paths and um, the pathfinding i think is one of the more impressive attributes outside of all the crazy stuff this model is already doing this is cool because i think we'll start to see a lot of the outputs of this start to be used in a much more interesting way than uh, some of the more manual ways of creating these and uh, some of the cooler ones, uh, there have been some games that are made that are like time traveling games or that are games where um, you can teleport to different places. And the coolest ones are where you just you teleport and then you can just generate an entirely new skybox for each one. Um, again, I, I still hope that in time they will implement a improved version of one of the original um, proof of concepts or demos that Scotty had, which was one where anywhere you weren't looking, the environment would morph and change and evolve. So when you turn around, it'd be totally different. And I think uh, it was probably like incredibly compute intensive because it was basically regenerating a portion of a skybox over and over again. And it's an, obviously a hard problem because it, at that point, more of the challenge was how you segment what is behind you. But uh, what, would be, what would be cool is if you could say, you know, when I turn around each time, what if I just segment what I can tell is a window and then regenerate what's in the window? Or if I can segment what people are, what if I could regenerate new people behind me to make, you know, some kind of a spooky sci-fi kind of a game. But, um, but yeah, so this is just a quick update of what Blockade Labs is still doing. Our last video with them didn't get a lot of interest, which was kind of surprising to me. But, uh, but yeah, definitely keep up with Scotty and Blockade Labs. We will definitely keep an eye on what they're working on. And otherwise, we will see you in the next video.